death an enemy but now a friend death an enemy but now a friend Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 but I will add to 23 to make this the understanding comes out better for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain if I am to go on living in the body this will mean fruitful labor for me yet what shall I choose I do not know I am torn between the two I desire to depart and be with Christ which is better by far. Hallelujah. I'll also take Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 following, but I'll be jumping some verses from the verse 1. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed, Instead, with our heavenly dwelling, because we are, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the verse says, therefore. We are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are always from the Lord. We are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. May the Lord God Almighty help us. So death, he that was an enemy. In fact, it is a matured enemy than sin. Sin is the beginning. And of course, it's also one of the biggest enemies you can think of. Because when sin comes, it is able to separate us from God. It brings us to a state that is too bad, deplorable state. It results in fear. It results in guilt. It results in shame when sin comes. But you know, death is as a resource of sin. An advanced level mature level of sin so if sin is an enemy then death will surely be a meta enemy so James will say that then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death full grown the amplified version will say that when sin has run its course, it began from the starting point. It runs, and then when it has run its course, it will give birth to death. So surely death is also an enemy. It is about a loss. When the family member dies, we have lost someone. But you know, it's not just someone we have lost, but we have lost a great investment. <laughs> if you have given birth and then you are bringing the bed, I mean, the, 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 the child up, you know what is involved. I, I had forgotten mine until Anaya came into the picture again. Then I began to re reflect on some of those things. It's not easy. The investment people make, even in a child, is not easy. It's not easy. When you want to sleep, <laughs> he wants to play. How do you go about this? So many sacrifices. So many. 
So many, so many, so many. So when the person has, has become that mature in age, all the investment society has made in him, all the investment that individuals have made in him, and all of a sudden it is gone down the drain. It's not easy. It's about separation. That you won't see the person again. You used to love the person so much. You won't see the person again. Anytime I am driving from Accra to Kumasi, when I get to a certain place, then I feel sad. Because I remember my father. And normally, when I'm traveling to um, Kumasi to Ashanti region, normally around that space, you always call me. So, Kwesi, where are you? How, how, how are you coming? So, when I get to those places, then I begin to feel, oh, so this man is no more. <laughs> this woman is no more. But I came to tell you that even though he's an enemy and the devil may want to use it against us, our God has turned out of death friendship that made something great out of us that project us to a level that we see our God, the goodness of our God in totality I came to tell you you may have gotten a shock of the separation of a loved one from you through death but I came to tell you that God is doing us good God is making us better and God is making them also better it takes away hope and aspirations Many people, they were aspiring so high, but somebody in their life just passed away. Then confusion starts. The schooling stops. Um, the mindset of going abroad, no more. And it distorts destinies. In fact, nobody in his or her normal natural form wants to encounter death. <laughs> we don't. So when the death is coming, we'll be running. Even the small boys, they'll be running. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they, they, they are running. So when the building is falling, oh, everybody will be running away. When the fire is coming, instinctively, you'll be running away. And you know, one amazing thing is that you may be walking along with a loved one, somebody you always want to be close to you. But when you see the person dying, because death has encountered the person, you begin to be run away from the person. Someone you love so much, even your wife, when the person is dead, you don't want to go to the person. You begin to now draw away. Someone you desire is not the person, but it's death that has come into the environment and you want to draw away from. It's not good. But Thanks be to God that Paul will say that but for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. So in Christ, death now becomes a friend. So that Paul becomes so confused whether he should live in this body or he should even die. Can you imagine this? In Christ, Death becomes a friend. God uses death to work for our good. He uses it to work for our good. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. For to me, for to me. It means that whether the death will continue to be an enemy or a friend, it depends on you. So Paul is saying that as for me, it's not you. <laughs> He's talking about himself. So I want to ask you, what is your stand now? Can death be again to you as we speak? Or death is still an enemy that you will fight to the teeth? No. No. For me, for to me, and some people say that, oh, you know, Ecclesiastes 7, 1 says that the day of death is better than the day of birth. But you know, it's not everyone. <laughs> For some people, the day of death is too bad. I read of a story of a nurse 
who, after experiencing the death of an unbeliever, didn't want to encounter as a nurse, nursing someone who is unbeliever and who is dying. So the story I read, when they brought the person, then she went and asked her boss, is she a believer? <laughs> because the encounters, even her nursing an unbeliever to death was too bad. But Paul would say that, for to me, so before Ecclesiastes said that the day of death better than the day of birth, he first made a statement. A good name is better than fine perfume or fine ointment. It means that there must be a good name. And when the good name comes, then surely the death shall be better than the birth date. I pray that God will change your name and make your name a good one. So man said that when death begins approaching unto you, you will meet death and ask death, where is your stink? Where is your victory? For Christ has won for us. Hallelujah. So for to me, I wish that in this service, where the family of my comfort, Edu is here, my body. I mean, we should come to a point where we will, we will understand that when death comes, we are still for God. When we live, we are still for God because we know that in all such, God is working for us. And God is showing his goodness unto us. So he will say to live is Christ. What it means is that when I'm also living, the source of my joy, the source of my strength, the source of my abilities to live and to live well is from Christ. And the reason why I live is also for Christ. And when I die, I also die with the same Christ as my source and the same Christ as my reason. So why can't I be confused whether to live here or to go up there? But I came to tell you, the up there is an enhanced form. It is a better form. So to die is to gain. To die is to gain. You may think that death will bring loss. But I tell you, we shall meet them there. Those that we think we have lost, we shall meet them there. And at that point, they will not be fooled of the weaknesses. We will see them in a much more refined form. My comfort, Edu, we will meet her. And when we meet her, she will not be walking like this again. No, she will not. She will be completely well. Some of us, we have loved ones that sometimes will annoy us. When we meet them there, they will not annoy us anymore. We will have them in their perfect form. It's my prayer that you will not be left out on that day. When we meet in heaven, you shall be there. Because it shall be glorious in our sight and the sight of God. Hallelujah. You may think that for death comes and there is no fellowship. But I came to tell you that over there, we will not just fellowship with man. We will fellowship with God in his fullness. Service and opportunities for glorifying God is gone. Now, we, we, uh, the, the, the woman will not be here to play the tambourine again. When we are going for uh, evangelism, where will be he? Um, her? She will not be able to go with us. But you know what? The issue is that that opportunity is going to be enhanced in heaven. You will praise the Lord all the time. Oh, what a time that God gives unto us in his presence. Then sometimes, because of some few comforts that we have in life, <laughs> some product that we are driving, some... <laughs> May the Lord God Almighty help us. Okay? some private jet that we have. So we think that we are comfortable here. But you see, the things that we have even here on earth, they are just a need for our purpose here. Over there, we won't, we, we won't need them. We won't need them. You know, when you are here on earth <laughs> and you want healing and you pray and God heals you, you think that you want to enjoy more of such you want to see more miracles. Over there, you don't need miracle. You are complete in yourself. And let me tell you this. Here, 
Even the things that God gives to us, we are just serious. So you own them like you don't own them. Don't you see? Except you are not a Christian. But if you are a Christian, the thing that God gives us, we own them like we don't, we don't own them. I want this thing to sit in your mind. When you get to that level, then you begin to understand what Paul really meant. That to die is gain. Because all that we can think of as advantageous, even for us here, is nothing to be compared with. In our death. So, family, I want to tell you, our mommy is gone. But he's gone to a better place. Gone to a better place. Hmm. Christo Obema Yena Ho Mena Obe Jojo Yenkra Oda Yenti Christo Christo Obema Yena Ho Mena Obe Jojo Yenkra Christo, 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 If you have the best, the way and best for the flag it and let me go through it. Of this song. When we wake up, we are rushing in and out. Why? Because we have to keep the family going. No matter how rich you think you are, you are still running around. No peace for everyone. But when death comes, and you have been saved, you know Christ, that it becomes a gain. Sometimes it's not easy to bomb you. And if I bomb what they did, and you know. I was saying this at the funeral that sometimes when you see they come alive or the Don Simons in the fridge sweating <laughs> inviting you and you still cannot eat because you have to pray you have to fast then it tells you that even that one <laughs> even that one so why so why so then Paul will say that we are confident I say and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Me, I prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Then he will tell us the implication. When you want to be that kind of person, then he will say, so we make it our goal to please him. Whether we are at home in the body or away from it, all that we live for is to please this God. To please this God. To please this God. So in our lives here, when we move out, it should be, are we pleasing God? As for my comfort, I can say that he, that is even why she, she, she got the name my body. Eh, my body, it be God, I could give him. And let me, let me give my whole setup to God. So that God shall be pleased. And that should be our mantle. That God, this life, and even the life after, is all about you. So why can't I? So we must serve God to the maximum. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. When we are no more on this earth, it will never be in vain. Serve God to the maximum. Then, don't fear people. Not even death. Because what can people do to you? They can only kill you. But when they kill you, it's also a gain for you. So don't leave fearing people. Don't. Don't, don't.
don't, don't, don't. And don't live with fear of death staring at you. No. Get in touch with your God. Strive to serve him with open hearts. And then move on. Because he will be with you even when you think he is not with you. May the Lord God Almighty help us so that we come to a point of understanding that death is an enemy but to us he has become a friend that expounds unto us the goodness of God in totality. May the Lord God Almighty be with us. You want to close your eyes? As we suddenly comes and pray just